Hi, I'm John Hallis from Dauntless Endeavors. In our last video, we showed that rechambering our Ruger American Rim Fire from a sporting chamber down to a bench chamber helped improve accuracy quite a bit. In this video, we're going to soft catch some bullets and show why it makes a difference. Before I get into the actual process of soft catching bullets, let's talk about bullet design first. Uh, first off, Sammy recognizes two different 22 long rifle chamber configurations. There's the sporting uh, chamber and there's the 22 long rifle match chamber. The difference between them is the match runs about four thousandths tighter on diameter and also it's about a hundred and fifty thousand shorter. Uh, although the match chamber does improve accuracy quite a bit over the Sammy sporting chamber, uh, there, it does have its own problems in that it's so tight that it can cause functioning problems, especially with a semi-automatic rifle. It'll give, uh, it can cause chambering problems and also extraction problems. So those issues have been resolved with the Benz chamber design, which is sort of a compromise halfway between the sporting and the match chambers. Uh, the idea is that it's tight enough to give all the accuracy benefits of the match chamber, yet loose enough that it still allows proper reliable functioning with all types of firearms. Having said that, I think a lot of people that even go to a bench chamber will find that they can have extraction problems, especially if you try to extract a loaded cartridge that once it's been chambered, um, they, they tend to get a little sticky. I know that happens on my 1022 as well. If you look at a loaded cartridge of a 22 long rifle, you'll see that the diameter of the cartridge case and the bullet are the same, or essentially the same. If you think about it, the only way those two can fit together is that the bottom part of the bullet has to be smaller diameter so that it can fit inside the cartridge case. So that's called a heel seated bullet and 22 long rifles are really one of the unique cartridges. It, they're one of the only ones in current production that are of this design. Here are a couple drawings of a 22 long rifle bullet. The one on the left shows what it would look like if you could pull it out of the cartridge, a loaded cartridge, without damaging it. And the one on the right is what it should look like after it's been fired. The biggest difference you'll see is that the bottom of the bullet on the, on the loaded cartridge, it's still smaller in diameter by about roughly six or seven thousandths in diameter. And the bullet on the right, when it's been fired, is now the, the base of that bullet should be the same diameter as the rest of the body. And that's important that it does that, that the pressure from the ignition of the cartridge bumps up that base of that bullet and, and swells it up to the same diameter so that the rifling can engrave that bullet fr from the front shoulder of the bullet all the way down to the heel of it. If it doesn't do that, the bullet won't fly accurately. With all of the random flyers that I've experienced with my Ruger American Rimfire, I've, got a, I've had a growing suspicion that that loose sporting chamber is, might be the culprit and that might be causing the base of the bullets not to swell up completely. So I decided to soft catch a bunch of bullets and see what they look like and uh, I'm going to show you quickly how I did that and then we'll put up some results from, from those experiments. When I refer to soft catching a bullet, what I mean is catching that bullet and deaccelerating it slowly enough so that I don't damage it in any way. I want to keep it as pristine as I can and believe me, a 22 long rifle is easily damaged uh, if it touches darn near anything. So what I found that works the best is actually, it's actually very simple. I have a six inch, six inch diameter cardboard shipping tube and I stuffed it full of polyester pillow stuffing that I got at a big box store. Hello? I have used six inch diameter PVC pipe 
for catching bullets and it works fine for 22 long rifles. However, if you try catching something more powerful like a, a centerfire cartridge and if the bullet should skid into the side of the tube, it will tend to blow big shards out of the plastic wall and it's, you'll ruin the tube and now you've got a mess to clean up. Uh, the cardboards, I think, are safer and uh, more durable. The other single biggest trick to catching the bullets is making sure that your tube is lined up just perfect so that your bullet doesn't, you want it to go right down the end. If you got it canted slightly one way or the other, then the bullet's going to go in a few inches and it's going to hit the side inside of the tube and you're going to deform the bullets. So. All right, we're back from the range. Uh, we just shot five rounds of a CCI mini mag into this tube through the uh, Ruger 1022. Yeah. So I expect that the bullets are going to end up somewhere about in this range here. So I'm not going to dig real thoroughly through the first few inches here because it's, it's a bit of a waste of time. The other thing is you won't see the bullets. You'll feel them before you find them, before you see them. Usually you get to a certain range in here where all of a sudden you, you find them all. And I think I grabbed the magic mitt full because I, can, I found one in here already. Okay, so I've, I am about this deep into my, this deep into my tube. <laughs> uh, I've pulled a wad out. I'm, I'm 14 to 16 inches, inches deep in the tube. And feeling through it, I finally found a couple bumps. And so as the, the bullet penetrates through the polyfill, it, it starts getting layers built up and built up until it almost like a little cocoon. And so uh, that's why well, you can't really see them, but you, you find the lumps. And then you just kind of work them out of the... And if it's, everything goes right, they should be in really, really nice condition. Uh, for some reason, they seem to be incredibly slippery when they come out of this stuff. I don't know why, but uh, it just, uh, when you're doing this, do it over the table. Because if you're trying to save them and, and have them in nice shape, it is kinda, it's disheartening to, the first thing you do is like, hey, look at I found it, and then it falls on the floor and gets a big dent on it. Now that we have all our bullets collected, let's take a look. I've got some close-up pictures, and I'm going to start with the bullets that were caught after having been fired through my uh, 1022 with the bench chamber. The CCI mini mags, you can see that they, they look just like the drawing that I'd shown earlier. The base of that bullet is bumped up fully, and the rifling is engraved in the bullet all the way to the heel. Uh, same goes for the uh, Ely 10X that I fired through the 1022. Uh, they, they look great just like they should. For comparison, let's take a look at the bullets that were fired from the Ruger American Rimfire with the stock sporting chamber. Here are my CCI mini mags that were fired through that gun. And you can see that the base of the bullets aren't fully formed. Uh, you can see where the rifling is engraving in the body of the bullet, and then it, the bullet gets too small to touch the rifling, and then at the very base of the bullet, the rifling engraves once again. On some of the bullets, the base of the bullet didn't bump up enough to even engrave, engrave the rifling at all on the very back. In my opinion, those bullets are the ones that are going to be the flyers. If we look at the Ely 10X bullets that were fired through the Ruger American Rimfire with the stock chamber, you can see that they look better than the CCI, but they aren't fully formed out either. There's still a gap between the bullet body, where the engraving is fully engraved, and the heel of the bullet, where the engraving once again picks up, and there's sort of a gap in between. This isn't ideal, but it is better than the CCIs. The last one I want to put up there is bullets I captured that had been fired through the Ruger American Rim Fire after having been rechambered with the Benz Chamber Reamer. Once again, you can see that the bullets have been fully formed up and the rifling is engraved in the bullet 
along the entire length of the body and the heel all the way to the bottom of the bullet. This is as it should be, and this, in my opinion, is the reason why the, these bullets shoot so much more accurately than they did when the Ruger American Rimfire had just the sporting chamber in it. So exactly what is going on inside that chamber that causes the bullet to fully form up out of a tight chamber, but not so much out of a loose chamber? I think it's the combination of, of the smaller diameter and the shorter uh, chamber length before the, the bullet engraves. Um, I think the smaller diameter helps that as the pressure builds, the cartridge case is going to expand a little bit and it doesn't release on a, on a bench chamber, it releases enough to let the bullet go, but not so much that you're getting a, a whole lot of pressure enveloping around the sides of the bullet. It's still mainly, mainly at the back of the bullet and it's going to help push it up. I think the shorter chamber dimension helps so that the, the bullet immediately finds some resistance instead of any free bore like on a sporting chamber. And that resistance, I think, also helps at the front of the bullet so that the pressure builds and bumps up the base of the bullet. I hope that this video has helped demonstrate what happens to a 22 long rifle bullet when it's fired, how the base of the bullet bumps up to the same diameter as the body, how that in, the rifling engraves along the entire length and why that's important, and also how a tighter chamber, whether it's the bents or the match chambers, help facilitate this process. I'm John Hallis from Dauntless Endeavors. Thank you very much for your time. Until the next one, have a great day and be safe.